I'll tell you what, this doesn't happen without you. And that's what it takes. I look around and I see so many people who all share the same hurt but hope. I'm surrounded by political leaders, community activists, and just constituents who want things to get better. Before I get into it, I want to take just a second, have all of us take a second, a moment of silence, to think about all the losses we've seen this weekend here in our local community, and in our region, and in this nation. Think about the individuals that are struggling with addiction, and the people who love them and struggle right along with them. You all join me in just a moment of silence, please. Thank you. You know, I see our Attorney General, Andy Bashir, and I see our County Attorney, Michael Connell, hit me. Remember last year, when Emily we organized the rally, they were out in front of this. And this is an issue, sometimes it has political minefields, but it took courage and work to move forward. At that time, we talked about the harm reduction. I didn't know much about it. Um, but I was educated. I was educated by people here in the community. I was educated by our political people. And I decided at that time that we needed to maybe take a stand. We hosted the first harm reduction naloxone free training here in Southwest Global. Um, and I had maybe 25 or 30 people show up. Four days later, I got a call from a friend, from a mother in my district, who said thank you because of the training. She was able to save her son. Four days later. Karen Johnson's a friend. She lives in my district and she came out with her story. And because of her bravery, other people were educated. Other moms, dads, grandpas, friends, other people understand the need, the concern, and the miracle. And since then, other council members, several of us, I see my good friend Pat Mobile, council member. Uh, Councilwoman Marion Butler, Councilman Dan Johnson, Cindy Fowler, so many people have hosted their own free naloxone training and we've gotten this drug out into the community to help those who overdose. But I'll tell you what, it's not enough because it's a multi-faceted approach that we have to have. We've got to educate and I'll tell you that we work a big part of our budget here locally and I know with the state and we're working with the federal government and all levels of government to educate and that's what this does. It helps educate, let people know what's going on. You gotta provide the ability to have treatment. I'm looking at my friends at the Healing Place. We're looking at building more and more rooms, having more places for people who have addiction, who want to get better, have ability to turn, to go through a treatment facility. We tell people, say no to drugs. We tell people, get clean. But it's up to us as a community to demand that they have the ability to do that. That when someone wants to get better, that we support that effort that we shed the stigma of being an addict and we look and we add hope. Because that's what we miss a lot of times in this community. When someone loses hope, there's little chance of recovery. Everybody has a story. My, my father struggled with addiction growing up. He went through the healing place a couple times. <laughs> and. But for the miracle of recovery, I can promise you, friends, I would not be standing here before you. And so I believe in that miracle, and I believe in putting back and helping this community. But one person doesn't do it. The syringe exchange program has been a positive thing. It started here in Louisville, it's been a positive thing. We got a lot of negative political pushback, but the people who are willing to stand up and put their neck out there, they knew it was the right thing. They forgot about the partisan politics and political games, and they did what was right for your community. Mr. Tilley is here today. He came and spoke to our Metro Council, along with Councilwoman Joni Jenkins at the time, and they talked about the need for it. They educated my local Metro Council, and it was passed unanimous. Regardless of the political pushback, and it's turned out to be successful. And all we're doing is we're trying to reduce the spread of disease in our community. We're trying to educate the people who want to get help, we're trying to apply hope so that they can get that help. But we need help 
at each level of government. I'm glad to see my friend here in the state. I'm glad to know that our congressman, John Yarmouth, has told me time and time again, I'm with you, we're gonna to work together. I'm glad we have people like Emily, who's willing to be such a strong advocate and a voice so we can continue to demand change. But don't give up on that, because we need the same kind of enthusiasm tomorrow. There's a saying in recovery, it works if you work it, it won't if you don't. But you have to people give the means to be able to do that. There's a prayer that's said in recovery quite often, it's the serenity prayer. And one of the lines in there says, the courage. God grant me the courage. And that's what it takes. So every one of us have been blessed be able to represent to be political leaders, I urge us to have that courage to stand up for what we know is right and the courage to demand the change to protect this community. Thank you.